How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. It has been a little while but I'm back now and I'm back to help you guys with interview preparation for medical school. So in this video I'm gonna run through the four most important tips to keep in mind straight after receiving your interview offer. It's basically gonna help you prepare a timeline towards your interview preparation and make sure that everything's covered you're not just practicing mindlessly, but you actually have a formula, a strategy going towards one of the biggest interviews potentially of your life. So I uh, hope you guys found this video useful and let's just get right into it. So the first one that I'm going to talk about might feel like a bit of an obvious one, but the first thing that you should be doing is figuring out the format of the interview at the specific medical school you got an offer from. Uh, although there is a lot of overlap between interviews amongst medical schools, there are really specific nuances for each medical school as well. Whether that be in the number of stations for a multiple mini interview, uh, the time you get in terms of your reading time and your talking time, the number of follow-up questions can be historically different for each medical school. And these things are critical to know before you start practicing anything because if it's not in line with what the medical school is going to ask you in terms of the timing, let's say, or the types of questions, then, then what's the point? You're not being as efficient as you could. Now, this doesn't have to be a complicated process. So I'm on Google now. I'm literally going to look up one of the medical schools in Australia and look up the interview format and let's just see what comes up. So I'm just going to go Deakin. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go Deakin Medical School Interview Format. And straight away, the first thing that comes up is the Deakin University 2020 medicine booklet, although it's the year before. The chances are it's not going to change drastically. So if you just quickly click on it, um, you've got the brochure. So I'm just going to try to control F here uh, and just control F stations. Yep. So you can see here, it tells you Deakin uses the multiple mini interview. Each applicant undergoes a series of five minute interviews at 10 stations. Uh, it even tells you what attributes they're looking for specifically. Now, the list of attributes will be quite common across the medical schools, but there are some things that you'll see some universities put more emphasis on than the others. So do your groundwork before you start any preparation and you can't go wrong. Number two, other than just learning about the format of the interview at the medical school, you should learn about the medical school itself. Okay, now this is something that students just know oh, of course i'm gonna learn about the medical school and you know what's cool about them what's not cool about them so i'm ready for that question like why do you want to come to x medical school but when you're researching you need to know exactly what things to look for or if you're in contact with someone from that medical school whether it's a friend or someone from the, your, your family you need to know what specific questions to ask them some of the main ones that you could ask them are uh, the values. This is also something you can just look up. So what are the medical school's values um, that they have? There's usually a list of say four to five values uh, that they attribute uh, to be their core value as part of what they're teaching that cohort. And the way you use that list is really important as well. Don't just go around listing the values. Uh, learn to talk about the values holistically in sentences where it doesn't feel like you're just name dropping it just to show them, hey, I looked your, your medical school up. Uh, but that's a whole different conversation. So the values is one of the main things that you should research. Uh, the curriculum, that's a big one, the curriculum, right? What are the number of clinical years versus preclinical years? How are the exam exams held? How are OSCEs held? What types of exams are there? Are they multiple choice, mostly short answer? What's the focus in the first couple of years? What's the focus in the last two years? Uh, where, where, the, where are the placement locations, right? Is it mostly in one place or do you get to preference a bunch of places? You need to know these things because hypothetically, if the university asks you, uh, what are you looking forward to if you get a chance to come here? Or what are some challenges do you foresee yourself facing if you get a chance to come here? It'll, it will come across so much better if you refer to these points specifically then if you say something generic like oh the workload is gonna be kind of bad i'll see you when we go with that like what like that's not specific to this medical school so definitely research the curriculum and the last one which i think is a really good one to uh research and medical schools love it right is the unique value propositions the uvps of that medical school for example the medical school i go to there is an exchange program that we can go to in fourth year uh to 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 specifically there are some countries that we can go to so if this comes up you know i can talk about 
that aspect of it as well that I'm really excited to be able to uh, take my skills to this place or I'm really excited to take part in this program that X Medical School offers and I think this is a really bit of a cheat code to set yourself apart because everyone's gonna say some generic stuff when it comes to these answers but you can point to specific things that will show okay this is not just a person who's like you know I'll, I'll take whatever I get I just want to get in I don't really care where I go as opposed to someone it's like I really want to go to your medical school and here's why hopefully you guys understand now the importance of doing this and it's definitely not too late even if you have a couple weeks till the interview or even a week just you can just really smash this out over a couple hours so get onto it okay so let's keep moving on our timeline and let's keep pushing forward so we have done the research part now so just to recap by this point you've learned the format of your interview and learned about the medical school that you're going to specifically the next thing to do is really plan out your own practice sessions now when I say plan out you need to plan this out to the T the specific details so I'm gonna jump on Google Calendar and show you what a week in my life would have looked like when I did interview a couple years ago so let's do that calendar out in front of me now and I'm gonna just gonna run through it now so essentially let's say on Monday I would be doing a full mock so when I say full mock I mean you do literally the mock so the interview as you would on the day so not doing one station getting feedback another station getting feedback literally doing the whole mock as you would do it on the day the whole one hour to 40 minutes hour and a half whatever your medical school is gonna be uh, the format's gonna be like so you do that on the Monday that's enough you know no need to go overboard there's interview prep can be spread out much easier than than some of the other academic studies so after Monday I've done the interview I know how I went specifically I know how I went in which stations so hypothetically let's say I really struggled with ethical stations so on Tuesday I would do a solid three hour block in the morning where I run through only only ethics stations right so I do back-to-back -back ethics questions plus get feedback from someone never do interview practice without feedback there's literally no point so you do interview practice ethics ethics questions plus feedback in the morning and then at night I would spend an hour just literally reflecting on the ethics feedback I got earlier so you've done that on the Tuesday now Wednesday what I would do is let's say you you found your public health stations really good so what I would do is Wednesday I'm only gonna do say one hour of public health medicine PHM uh, public health medicine uh, stations literally just casually practicing with some stations and then at night what I would do is for public health what I would do is read up read up on pertinent issues so really browsing on any pertinent issues that are in Australia or globally and try to learn a bit more about them not necessarily statistics but trying to learn what causes them etc and then I would usually take a day off there on the Thursday and then on Friday what I would do is I would target another of my week stations maybe that's personal stations now the week ones really have to go for a long time so I would, I would, I would really aim for like at least one and a half hours to up to three hours in the morning you'll run through just personal stations with someone get some feedback and really reflect on it and then I think this process of reflecting at night really passive doesn't take a lot of energy you're just relaxing re reviewing what you've learned today and some things that you would improve that's it and then I would end the week off again with with uh, with another mock so you do mock B this day now if you do this for two weeks three weeks even better nothing's gonna stop you because you have a really nice feedback loop where you do formal practice and then you figure out your weaknesses you couple that with casual practice and you end off with reflection nothing can stop you um, in terms of how you do these things that's a whole different video in terms of how you, what you actually do in the sessions but a quick pointer would be to either have someone in front of you or at least be recording yourself don't just run through like bullet points in your head because I'm telling you on the day when you walk through those doors it's a whole different ball game so you definitely want to be prepared for that my final tip for you guys would be to focus on the little things. The little things make a huge difference in medical school interviews. What, I, what do I mean by little things? The things people don't focus on enough, right? What am I talking about? Nonverbals, your posture, 
your hand movements, your smiling, the way you the way you seem concerned when the interviewer says some says talks about a tough situation, uh, the way you seem happy when you're making a joke or talking about something more lighthearted, these things will make a huge difference, especially if your interview is online. So focus on these little things, pinpoint these out. Maybe it's the way you're sitting, maybe it's the way you're looking when you're thinking, whether you're looking up versus looking down. These things make a big subconscious difference to the interviewer. So definitely pay a lot of attention to it. So non-verbals, big one. The other big one, just so I can give you something to go with and I'll give you three three little things to focus on, but you, you should really be finding these things out for yourself. Uh, choice of words. The words you use sometimes can have a big impact on how things are coming up and sometimes it could be devastating if you say something that's even mildly offensive that comes across really bad like when talking about minority groups when talking about say indigenous australians when talking about um any any genders etc the way you phrase things has to be respectful and professional and and maybe you don't mean it that way and you just offhandedly say something naively uh, interviewer doesn't know you, but to them that could be a big red flag, right? Because this is a big interview, uh, you will uh, hypothetically become a health professional in the future. So these things can make a big, big difference to them, which is why it's important to let someone hear it uh, before the big day so they can tell you this is not sounding too good. Definitely don't use that term, definitely don't say this. Um, because again, naively, you could say something that could really hurt your chances. The other little things are your setup, right? This setup is, I would say, it took me a while to figure out the specifics of how to get a good setup. It's still not perfect. You know, little things like I got this new light that kind of changes brightness and I think it makes a big difference. I can choose like that sweet spot. Uh, some of the things happening in the back. Uh, so focus on these little things on how it's going to look if your interview is is online. If it's in person, start thinking about what you're going to wear. Are you going to shake shake the interviewer's hand? How are you going to maintain eye contact? Things like that will make a big, big difference. Alrighty, so that's enough rambling from me. I hope you guys found this video useful. Best of luck with your interview, whether it's this year or you're just watching and preparing for the future. Uh, thanks for jumping on and I hope you guys took something from this. Um, when I did my interview, I was really nervous and I definitely did not have everything sorted in my head. This is more, you know, reflecting for two years. I've been helping students prepare for the interview, so I've really learned a lot since then. Um, so I'm passing this on to you guys. But definitely when I was doing my interviews, everything wasn't perfect. And everything won't go to plan on the day. I was still able to get a place. So on the day, stay relaxed. But right now, it's worth it. Double down on it. Become a full blown detail oriented person think about everything i think it's worth it so good luck message me on instagram if you need anything else and i'll see you guys in the next one peace